Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Thanks for visiting once again. And um, you join me today for a, a kit review of um, an Airfix kit, uh, which I've had in my collection for a little while now. Now, let me just see if I can move this and just move that bit of kit out of the way for a minute and see if I can put this up um, like that. Because um, as you can see, it's a fairly large box. I'm just moving the, the camera, so I'm going to show it this way for a minute. Um, this has been in the collection for quite a long time now, and um, as you probably saw there, it's an F1 stroke 1A. Um, so it's an early to mid lightning um, and um, has the Aiden cannons fitted, but more about that in a little while. Um, and I picked it up from somewhere, <coughs> excuse me, I don't recall where, um, for a, I think about 40 quid or something along that line. It's a fairly old kit in terms of its moulding, I think. It's um, A09179. And I think we'll be able to find out exactly how old the moulding is when we go into the into the plastic at some stage, which we'll do in a few minutes. But um, I thought I'd do a, a quick review of it. I haven't seen too much in the way of um, English Electric Lightning in the last <coughs> a few months or so. Awful lot of um, um, interest in the F35 Lightning II, of course. Um, not least of which because is. Um, that uh, Airfix have released um, a quick build version of the Lightning 2 and various other versions, I think in 172 scale. You Airfix um, people who know about those sort of things will be able to um, correct me if I'm wrong. But I thought I'd take a look at this one today um, as a sort of perhaps a, a look back in history from people. So. Um, the, I, I like the front picture, it's rather nicely done and it is signed by a 2B I believe so um, there's the signature just up there you can perhaps just about see that let's see if we can zero in on that and just show you that oh it's not enough room oh there you go you can just see it in the corner there it's not helpful the way I've done that but um, we'll just zip back out again to um, as far as we can and then we can uh, take the box away so it's the usual airfix box as you'll as you'll know so we'll I'm just going to fetch the lid off and then perhaps the reflective bits will not be um, such a problem so there we go put that away there and um, because this came from I think from a, a collector or private sort of collecting guy the guys made whoever it was that sold it to me has made a very considerable effort to preserve the kit um, and I think that's pretty excellent quite honestly um, and so there's an instruction book and it's in a, in a little packet like this that's rather rather splendid we'll take a look at that in a minute um, we've used tissue paper to um, cover up the uh, the whatnots, and and the as you can see, um, I've opened up the packet to have a look inside it. But all of the screws come in one bag, so I mean I'm going to do my usual thing, by the way, which is to say I'm going to look at the instructions and then draw things out of the bag as I see fit. So I'm going to take this out of the bag, uh, out of the box, and and then we can look at other things. But uh, as you can see, I've got some. Uh, some upgrade uh, bits and pieces here from Ares um, which I believe are quite good um, and um, some other bits and pieces there I've got the F1 F2 mask there for the uh, for the canopy and the wheels um, I've got the um, ejection seat and um, ejection you know the the tub and front mountings there I've also got the undercarriage wells as well, which are fairly considerably more detailed, and also the um, jet pipes too. So there's quite a few little upgrades there, which I, I hope I'm going to make um, good, uh, you know, on the kit with this. But I'll tell you what we'll do is I'll, I'll put them away, and we'll we'll what was that I just oh <laughs> it's an unscheduled piece of um, Fokker Wolf there. Uh, there's a story behind that um, which is and you'll be probably wondering why I haven't um, completed that yet but I will tell the story very briefly perhaps towards the end anyway so let's put this away in my ditty box for a minute um, and uh, we can um, look at that in a in a short while but we'll we'll draw out the instructions first um, and um, what you'll see is that um, it's uh, it's actually full colour instructions. I think it's rather nice to be honest with you. I think I think Airfix have done a good job with this in in terms of my initial um, you know um, apprehension of it. 
Um, here's another example of just exactly how carefully the um, <coughs> the guy who did this and sold it to me wrapped up the product. He wrapped up the the decals in some tissue paper, and it's um, it's it really is properly wrapped up here, as you can see, um, and it's even got the original tissue paper as well. So we've got. Um, the markings for um, XR751, XM174, uh, XM143 as well. You've got all of the roundels here. Um, I will say I think the decals look, you know, pretty good to be honest with you. The, I, I don't know whether the, the colours don't look quite right, but the, the quality of the decal looks looks quite nice. There's not very much carrier film on them at all. Um, it, I don't think it says what. Um, particular maker is but I mean it might be that um, that Italian bunch that people always talk about in reverential terms I'm not really sure but in any event look pretty good um, there's also cockpit um, detailing there which to be honest I don't think is particularly good it's, it's more of a, a sort of a photographic shadow but maybe that can be improved upon with the Ares upgrade set that would be quite good but probably reflects the age of the kit and so we can't really look at older kits through shall we say a modern day lens because everything always improves that's the way the arrow of time flows or, or, or flies isn't it so um, I'm not going to be harsh on that um, he says having realized that he just has been um, so uh, there we are but as you can see, some some considerable care has been taken in the packaging of this um, this kit to make certain that it gets to the to the buyer in 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 tip top order. So I mean, congratulations to the seller. I can't remember who it was, I'm afraid, so I can't give the guy a shout out here because I it's actually I'd say a year and a half since I bought this, probably more than that. So it's. This has languished in my collection for that period of time, um, and um, you know, as I say, I, I, I've decided to take a look at this because I'm going to inject this into the build plan um, at, at some stage for, for this year. So we'll leave that there. So those of you who know the um, um, the English Electric Lightning, you'll know that the English Electric P1 was the development aircraft from around the 1950s, and um, the RAF's operational requirements, the name of which, or the the, um, the name of which escapes me, the number of which escapes me, um, wanted a, a Mach 1 capable um, aircraft um, that was capable of Mach 1 in climb as well as anything else. And the top speed of this aircraft uh, was 1500 miles an hour, so that's about 2400 kilometers an hour for those of you who do it in, um, in modern. Um, I do it in English still, to be honest with you, because I know kind of what that means anyway be that as it may so Mac 2 um, capable um, in in super cruise um, and um, powered by two vertically mounted Rolls-Royce Avon engines you can see them there um, and um, it was well ahead of the the uh, the competition at that stage and I think remains so in terms of rate of climb even to this day I think the lightning has the highest rate of climb of any aircraft um, uh, built uh, um, since then so it still holds records clearly not flown anymore the last lightning to fly was at Thunder City in South Africa um, and you may be interested to know that um, Professor Brian Cox was one of the last people to fly in the aircraft before very sadly it crashed at a, a show killing its pilot some I think two or so weeks later but um, one of Brian Cox's um, programs um, showed his flight from um, ground level to 50,000 feet uh, where they did a roll off the top um, and he went up to that sort of height so that you could actually see the curvature of the earth and also see the blanket of course that is the atmosphere and at that kind of height it is very possible to see that um, so there we are um, not flown any longer I think at Brunting Thorpe there is um, an aircraft that remains on the ground and does what's called fast taxi runs, so it gives people an opportunity to see the engines running and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, I don't suppose we'll ever see one of these flying again. 
in a model you've got three variants here um, <coughs> excuse me I'll just bash the microphone there as well so that's going to come out with a big clonk sorry to all of you people who listen through headphones my apologies you have XM 174 XM 143 <coughs> and XR 724 I seem to recall I can't remember exactly but we'll look at that later on it's just down there and I can't quite make it out so that's the aircraft why am I building a lightning uh, an English electric lightning very good reason for that some of you will remember that I did a build series on the English electric or BAC TSR2 some well, couple of years ago it took a year the build by by the way but um, you will remember that um, those of you who know will know that the TSR2 was <coughs> tested or test flown by Roland Beaumont uh, he was the chief test pilot at English Electric um, he um, also test flew the English Electric P1 uh, and was was the development pilot for this aircraft as I understand it he's also the test pilot for the English Electric Canberra as well so in this series that of, of builds that I will do or projects that I will do at some stage you will see a Canberra hopefully in 148 scale and if I make a good fist of this one then um, I shall put that into my own shall we say private collection uh, and I, I won't be giving that one away um, so I will, if it's a good one I'll keep it um, and I'll, well if it's a bad one I'll keep it as well actually <laughs> but um, there we are so I will do a Canberra at some stage in, in the future. I don't have one yet, but when I find a, um, you know, a suitable one in 148 scale, I'll get one if I can get some upgrades with it as well. So that, that would be my plan there as a sort of little tribute to a test pilot who I hold in some esteem. My intent is to use essentially this scheme here and to model XM135. Now, you'll see that number written there. I was covering it craftily up until that point. But XM135 was the aircraft, if you know your, 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 um, your onions on this, and many of you will, XM135 was at RAF Lynham in 1966. Uh, it suffered a fault, and the fault was being uh, diagnosed by um, a, an engineer called Taffy Holden. Now Taffy Holden um, had some experience flying chipmunks which is what one might call a tail dragger uh, but nothing else um, and um, the fault was exhibited quite close to takeoff speed <coughs> in um, you know in full throttle mode um, and it, I think eventually was tied down to being a, a wire that came off somewhere in the in the guts in here. Um, the aircraft that he was sat in and doing the throttle trials on down a runway had no radio, the ejection seat was disabled, he had no parachute therefore, and the uh, canopy was taken off. And what he did when he went down the runway on this in this aircraft was not being completely familiar with the throttle, and you'll, you'll be vaguely familiar with the throttle handle, if you push the throttle to its limit there's a click stop and then it moves further on if you move it this one click further on to its full extended position you engage the afterburner and you simply cannot pull the throttle back to disengage the afterburner there's a switch underneath I think the front here that you have to press in to then unlatch it so you can pull it back and that switches the afterburners off so he pushed the thing to maximum throttle and was herring off down the runway clearly pushed it too far, engaged reheat um, and then was actually beetling off down the runway at very high speed. He narrowly missed colliding with another aircraft that was on takeoff manoeuvres and a fuel bowser and went airborne. Flew the circuit once, couldn't land and then flew the circuit a second time and then got the aircraft down. Um, but he was not a pilot, it flew this aircraft without a pilot, um, that's an interesting story. Um, there's a lovely piece of video on YouTube of Taffy Holden actually at Duxford where this aircraft now sits as an exhibit, or XM135 sits as an exhibit. Um, when the, um, the, the guide was, was guiding people to this aircraft and said, oh, this is XM135, it flew without a pilot. And, and we're very lucky because Taffy Holden's here today. And the people who were looking at this guided tour had the great privilege of hearing Taffy Holden speak about his experiences. 
I think that's good enough to actually want to model this. It will be possible to create the decals. I'm going to have to do some doctoring to create the decals, and that's what I intend to do. So uh, you saw it here first. Um, I did exactly the same thing with the um, Vault Corsair that I built uh, when I doctored the um, RN uh, Fleet Air Arm decals to create KD431 simply by cutting them up. Uh, I thought that looked quite convincing in 148th scale. I think this will look similarly convincing, but one does have to have one's wits about one. So there we go. So that's the plan. So let's now take a look at the aircraft itself, um, and all the instructions anyway. Um, so <coughs> usual thing, um, you know, um, bits and pieces in various, um, you know, uh, languages um, in about the aircraft and then the um, assembly instructions, um, you know, study the drawings and, you know, do a practice assembly and so on and, you know, don't run with scissors and, um, you know, don't chew razor blades and uh, all that sort of thing and then you've got the icon instructions here. Um, those of you who know Airfix will know what all of this means. It's pretty self-explanatory but I urge you do take a look at that. So as we move into <coughs> the um, build phase, let's take a look at cockpit tubs and I'll do a quick comparison between the seat and the cockpit tub and the upgrades. So we'll just dwell a pause of two marching paces while I fetch out the bits and pieces. So there we have the Ares upgrade. We then have, if I can find it, um, there's no actual part numbers um, in terms of frame numbers here by the look of things but greatly to my good fortune we can see the the tub and the um, uh, the seat here but we can also see the seat top here so that's where the pull handles are for the ejection seat and the inside of the seat there so we can we can take a look at that um, we've got the tub there as well so we're, we're pretty much in the right sort of place. So let's put my little bag of tricks down there and then we can perhaps zero in on this for a little bit and, and take a look at the, um, well, we'll take a look at the pilot figure as well. I don't model these with pilots obviously as you know, but so here we go. Let's just have a zero in here. Um, just give me a second whilst I, again, these aren't edited, these videos. I'm gonna shed some additional light on the matter because my, um, my battery lamp has um, gone a bit on the duff side. Give me a second. There, that was dead air. So hopefully, this looks a little better now. So let's let's zero in on on our. Um, there we go. So we can see the the um, the cockpit tub there. It's it's somewhat detailed, um, reasonably crisply so, but um, not significantly and. We can also see the um, the um, seat backs here, or the seat sides there, um, and it appears that um, they fit together, as you can see. And I suspect that seat back there um, sits into the back of it. Yes, that's exactly what happens there. You can see that there, that pre-assembled part, um, which is parts no numbers four and six. Um, and the painting instructions are quite detailed on, on that section there, as you can see, that's just that up there. And then this um, part number five, which is that one there, sits straight in, and then this section sits on the top of here. So there's some detail to look at. So what we'll do is we'll just I'm going to zero out a little bit, and then we can look at this a bit later on. So these Ares kits, I'm not really particularly familiar with them, but um, we've got an instruction leaflet here and a panel and there are seat belts to add in. Um, the, there is, I suspect this to be a photo etch part, um, possibly PP12 I think by the look of it, which goes in. Um, there are other um, Dealey's and Johnson's here that we can look at here. Um, and so well, let's look at the, at the seat. Nicely packaged this, quite good there. And the first thing we can take a look at is the, uh, we'll take a look at the, the seat tub, the cockpit tub here. And what we can see more or less immediately is that, wherever it is, there it is, let's just turn that over a second. Um, you can see that there's considerably more detail there, much, much more 
Um, you know, the back of the cockpit here is pretty plain. Let's get my poker out wherever it is. It's over here, look. Um, better than my grubby old finger, eh? Um, so there's, this is quite plain, much more detail in there. Let's see if we can just zero right in on that. You've got side panel details here. Oh, this is rather lovely, isn't it? Look at that. Um, yeah, that's very nicely done. Look at that. So most of this sort of stuff, all the stuff that, that you would use regularly, throttle levers and so on and all that kind of thing are up here and up in front of you. All of the um, control panel, um, you know, the instrument panel, um, important things will be up in front of you. All designed to keep the cockpit's eyes out of the cockpit and, and not in it. So um, what we'll do is I'm going to zero out a little bit and then we'll take another little look at the other bits and pieces. So that's the seat there again some some significant detail there let's just turn that up the right way so we can see it um, it's not that much different between the two things to be honest with you but you've got the texture of the, cu the seat cushioning there which is good um, I, I like the idea of that but I think one has an opportunity oh you've even got the um, ejection post there as well um, but one one can see the um, the detail of the Martin Baker ejection seat really very easily so there'll be a pull handle up there a pair of them and then the high G pull handle will go in um, at the let's see if we can get that focused the high G pull handle will go in there um, pulling the high G pull handle is I think it moves about two inches or so something along that line um, and um, is about it, it, the pull strength is about the same as a weight of a bag of sugar something along that line so it's not very much at all so you do have to have your wits about you. Um, the other elements that we can see here is the, um, the cockpit, um, the upper part of the cockpit here. I think that's the radar screen there. Um, there's other bits and pieces and Johnson's here. I'll do some research and then I'll talk you through what all these things are the next time that we come to see this. We've then got the lower cockpit um, instrument panel here which needs to be added in. Um, and let's just have a quick look at that for a second. In fact, I'll look at that in a minute. Okay, so the other thing that you can see here is that this should be attached and it's actually fallen off. So um, it's um, not exactly what you would want, to be honest with you, because obviously resin is quite brittle. Um, one does have to exercise some care in. Um, sawing and, and, um, and moving it around because the dust is carcinogenic as well so let's just flip this over a minute and just have a look what we have in there is a um, an instrument panel you can see that there I'm not going to take that out just yet you then got the seat belts as well and there's the upper ejection pull handle there and the lower ejection pull handle is secreted away there but you can you can see this in some more detail in this photograph here so this is actually a really um, significant um, um, update or upgrade, but I should mention that it's a Mark II, Mark VI cockpit set, not a Mark I, Mark IA. So there will of course be some slight inaccuracies in this, and I, I think I was not able to find a Mark I, Mark IA variant, so that is why it is like that, um, and um, you know, don't flame me. I'm going to do it that way. I think that'd be the right way to go about it. Um, I think that you know, but it will be slightly inaccurate. What the inaccuracies are likely to be, it does remain to be seen. But again, it's something to um, for me to research. So we can put all those back in there now, um, and it gives you a good comparison between those two sections. So we'll take that away and just put that underneath there for a second. So as we move on here um, into the um, adding the pilot, if you wish to do so, again this decal is not particularly detailed, so um, that's going to be quite important. But uh, once that's then added in, um, section six, we're looking at the nose cone. So this item here, this is called the shock cone, um, and um, it's advising 20 grams of weight in here. So I've got the Aries update for this, so we'll need to investigate how that goes in. I think the insides of these were white, um, so they'll have to be painted, and then the shot cone was a different colour as well. So um, as you can see, the intake goes underneath the pilot's cockpit there. So um, there we go. So let's take a look at that, uh, 
that update there. So that update um, again includes wheel bays as well. So that's that's fairly significant in and of itself. So what we can do is we can see a number of parts here: wheel wells, some other Johnsons and Dealies, and then we got the, the this um, item here, which is the um, intake. So let's see if we can to try and take that out with a there we go that came out there now so there we have the intake there um, it's not entirely clear how that goes in um, so let's find part number 15 out of our um, out of our list there's um, one of the things it will take some time for me to get these bits and pieces out um, and I shall do so as quickly as I can with due regard to the um, you know looking after the components as it were um, so so part number 14 is the shock cone which I imagine remains as, as a part of the um, original fit um, there and that fits in really very snugly there's almost no play in that at all I can I can introduce the the Aries part onto the back of the shock cone here and there's very little movement so that's a very fine fit indeed um, so I'm looking at how we replace this um, and what you do is you would replace parts 15 and 16 by the look of it with this um, there's probably going to be some engineering required here yes yeah, so there we go in the instructions we can see that confirmed so um, you add some bits and pieces in here um, and then you add the kit part in um, and then the kit part and this this section here fits into the intake pipes which are these two here so those are part numbers 16 and 17 and you see this here um, you see this happening here um, with this section here which is the intake fanning uh, fan ducts and so on and so forth here so we'll flip that over there and see if we can um, just have a quick look see how that goes in so um, that has to go that way up like that there'll be a cutout to go into there like that so again that looks to be a relatively snug fit it's difficult to see precisely how that goes but there should be a, a gap around the um, around here to allow the egg to go in and so on um, and all this section obviously comes off so we're gonna have to have our wits about us to attend to that side of it but um, I think in the main looks fairly straightforward I would suggest um, and uh, we just have to follow the procedures well and, and attend well to the bits and pieces and as you know um, I take the view on this that if Zin can you can and I think I can so I guess you can too um, so that's step seven step eight is the jet pipes the tail pipes and you will recall that I'm, I'm for the sake of speed I'm going to just put that away like that into my ditty box at the back so I'm going to just draw these out so we've again we've got the the notes here the exhaust nozzles so this, this is again a nice significant upgrade in terms of the fact that you get photo etched exhaust nozzle here to add in and we've then got the, um, the pipes and the uh, the petals you know the exhaust nozzle petals to put in so we can really go to town on some detailing here let's look at that you can see that detail there and maybe we can compare yes we can indeed compare because that's um those two kit part sections are 24 and 23 so we've got those there so now we can look at the, the detailing between the two parts and you can see how significantly it is an upgrade so it's really quite good there um, what you also have as you can see in here are um, flutes around this so that that's again um, a lovely little upgrade there which anybody who cares to look into the back of the kit will be able to see I did the same thing on TSR2 with the with the jet nozzles um, and 
there's the back of those as well so we can take a look at, at those as and when we need to and, and I will obviously build them into the kit um, instructions are pretty again pretty straightforward there I would say you know gives you what you need to know there I think that's that's quite nice let's zero back out again so I can put that back on there um, and we can put that there I must admit on the surface of it I'm not unimpressed with the Aries kit upgrades I think they look pretty bloody good actually to be honest with you um, so seven and eight um, and nine uh, which is the other jet nozzle um, you know the jet um, inlet um, this here um, go on and then we're into the guts of actually putting the aircraft together and turning it into a lightning and this gives you an idea of just exactly how big this aircraft is it's fairly significant uh, it's not as large as a TSR2 but fairly significant nevertheless it was something of a departure in um, in aircraft um, jet engine design that the engines were placed one above the other it presents difficulties in terms of engineering because I think I think it's number two engine is the top again correct me I've got I, I, I've got a 50 50 chance if I've blown it I'll be annoyed with myself but if you want to replace the number two engine the number one engine has to come out um, you know pretty much at the same time so it's a big job but you can see how you know how sizable this is it's it's reasonably large and so this is going to be quite an imposing kit when built I would say so now let's look on the back of these ah here we go look this is what I was thinking of it's, I, I noticed someone else had said about this so you can see there 1997 so we're 2024 now so this is um, you know this is uh, 27 years old this molding but doesn't look bad for it to be honest with you you know the 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 um, the detailing on the um, uh, on the uh, panel lines uh, it looks nicely done um, you know it's molded in well you know there are there are nice um, demarcations on this swelling here which I believe to be the fuel tank um, so again um, you can get hold of one of these at a reasonable price I would suggest it's not going to be at all a bad kit to take the pieces uh, to take the pieces to put together even um, I don't quite know why I suggested it might be taken to pieces uh, but there we are so I am um, must admit I, I would quite like to get my teeth into this one so um, step 10 sees us putting together the um, fuselage sections with all our, our, our the pre-built sections so page one if you like and page two um, culmination of page two is putting all this stuff together so things should start to happen fairly quickly after that we have wing assembly so we'll be introducing the Ares upgrades here uh, and that's going to be some work there um, slots here for um, uh, improving uh, aerodynamics uh, at low speed um, there's flaps as well in fact actually are those leading edge flaps I think they'll probably be leading edge flaps won't they and then ailerons on the back um, then we're into the canopy um, uh, here and then adding some further updates here depending upon which variant if you use the C variant there are some things to add in um, and then we're really quite close to the end here of the of the whole project and again I think it's, you know it's pretty self-explanatory stuff really I don't need to go into much detail about this in terms of um, if I got wings here yes yeah, so I've got some I've got some wings here let's have a quick look at the wings um, actually what you can see these are the um, the engine tailpipes for the kit parts and if we zero in actually we can see some there are some um, ejector pin markings here that we would need to remove if we haven't got an Aries upgrade similarly ejector pin markings here I don't think they'll get in the way so much but uh, we would need to work on them but the fluting on the inside of the um, jet pipes here is not quite so um, detailed as on the Aries upgrade let's move forward to wings and tailplanes single section tailplanes so uh, horizontal stabilizers and vertical stabilizers um, looks to be quite a nice junction between the rudder and the vertical tail fin here um, there's, yeah there's a there's a little line here that we can see which is just a mold line I think but I don't think that's going to show through paint but uh, we might care to 
Let's give that a quick sand. It's the same on both sides, but there's there's detail where really detail needs to be. That looks quite a sharp line, but it looks like that's where the plastic met, shall we say, when it was when it was molten, and it and it um, will have come in from here and in from there, and maybe sort of in from there as well. I don't know, maybe in three directions. But you've got this line where the the hot plastic melt uh, met and then hardened. So um, interesting um, little physical characteristic there, but it's the same on both sides. But nice detail there. It looks it looks quite pleasant. You know, it shouldn't be an, an issue in any meaningful sense. Um, you know, the detailing on the rest of the of the of the parts looks looks reasonably good. And as I say, I think in, under some paint, this won't be a, won't be so much of an issue. I hope that you were able to see that. Let's zero back out again. So. There we are with the um, main planes, uh, rear stabilizers and vertical um, stabilizers. Then we're into the um, uh, undercarriage. Um, Lightning undercarriage was actually used by, I think, the Thrust SSC team for the wheels on their on their very quick car. Um, I can be. Um, I can't confirm that. I seem to recall that sometime in the past somebody mentioned, or I mentioned, uh, I, I saw that written down somewhere. Um, so again, I think it's a question of check the references, look for the um, updates and upgrades that one can perform oneself with lead wire. I shall certainly be doing that myself, as you know. I like to do that kind of thing. Uh, that's just me. Um, then we're through to the very final bits, really, in terms of. Um, drilling for various bits and pieces here and then we're we're very nearly done we've got red top or fire streak missiles to be able to make if you want to i shall be doing a museum variant so i won't be doing any of that um, and we'll just be um having the aircraft itself and um sitting that as as a as a museum piece we then move on to the um the painting options here XM174 with the metal finish and the um, red markings top and bottom. Then we have the, the flash of blue here for XM143. Of course, mine will be XM135. Um, and then the metal finish. And then the final aircraft would be in the camouflage finish with the um, silver underneath, of course. Um, and um, Finningly, Brunting, Thorpe, la 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 la, you know the story as well as anybody else. Um, and then stencil data, which is reasonably extensive. That should take all of one day, I suspect. Um, and there you are, a completed kit. Um, I, I don't score kits um, like Steve's Vintage Model Builds do uh, does, and he's, um, hello Steve, hope you're, hope you're well. Um, he does some nice little um, uh, kit reviews which are quite scientific, uh, mine are more um, conversational shall we say, um, and I hope that you like that, but um, give Steve a visit um, and uh, go and see what he's up to, because it's always going to be interesting to go and visit him. Uh, but that's the English Electric Lightning and I shall be using that to go alongside my BAC TSR2 or English Electric TSR2 um, and um, I think that's going to be quite a nice little kit to put together um, hopefully I won't take a year on it as I did with the TSR2 and hopefully it won't be too long before I um, crack on and do this I do hope that's been interesting for you everybody and thank you very much for your time today um, I shall uh, be in touch the next time round when I've got some more projects to finish. Um, the Fokker Wolf will take some time, I'm afraid, because I've got to get some more cockpit masks. You know, some not cockpit masks, the uh, masks for the the transparencies, because I've lost the bloody mask set I had. I don't know where it's gone, so I'm a bit miffed about that, to be honest with you. And uh, I've got to now find myself some money because I uttered um, a foul oath. Um, so, um, in fact, actually, bloody isn't even on there. Oh, yes, it is. It's 13 pence, and that was Chris's rally car miniatures who helped me with that. Well done. Um, so, um, I've got to use that. So, um, again, if you want to add anything to the swear box, there's still some room. I can, I can put the, you know, put it down there, and then, and you know. So, if you think that there's a, a particular word you ought to uh, um, have, com you know, to have uh, a fine attached to. 
then please crack on. I will credit you. You can see Nigel's modelling bench there and good old Finsbury and Owen um, and um, uh, various other folk here. Um, so, um, yeah, do, do add on to that. In the meantime, until the next time I see you, thank you very much for, for watching today. Um, like, share, subscribe, you know, the usual things. I'm always delighted to hear what you have to say in the comments as well. So many thanks indeed for your time today. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks very much. Bye-bye for now.